our service of Holy Eucharist begins with the penitential order on page 319. The penitential order on page 319. We begin with the Lenten acclamation in the middle of the page, and then we turn to page 317 to pray the Decalogue. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Kneeling, let us pray. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws on our hearts, we beseech thee. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, 
whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ, thy Son, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Let us read the psalm as found in your service leaflet. We will read the psalm antiphonally by whole verse, the right side of the church beginning with the first verse, the left side answering with the alternate verse. Let us now read Psalm 25 verses 1 through 9. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. My praises of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth, bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The second lesson is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham, Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. 
in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. 
For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to lose their life, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Please be seated. As Christian people, we always live in the tension between the now and the not yet between the way the world is presently and God's promises of what is to come. And it raises the question of what we shall do in the meantime, in this middle place. How shall we live and move and have our being by the grace of God? What does it mean to be faithful in this time and place? and in any time and place, really. Our scripture readings for the day frame this well. In Genesis, we hear God invite Abram and Sarai into a covenant of relationship and blessing that will not just be for them, or even just for their children, but for countless generations. In fact, the covenant and the blessing God makes with them is universal. It is for the blessing of all people and all nations. Despite their advanced age and Sarah's infer Sarai's infertility, God promises their descendants will be as numerous as the stars. As a sign of this promise, God changes their names to Abraham and Sarah, new names for a new future. And yet, they lived only to see their son Isaac reach adulthood. They were not able to see the fulfillment of the promise beyond that. The not yet of God's future was only just beginning. Paul, in his letter to the Christian believers in Rome, reflects on Abraham and Sarah's willingness to be faithful to God and to trust in God's promise. And that faith, Paul says, that faith was the vehicle for God's grace, not only in their lives, but in the life of the world. Paul, as a faithful Jew, has been the beneficiary of that faithfulness part of the blessing to the world that God had promised. And now he sees that promise coming to a new kind of fruition in Christ. In the gospel, Jesus draws the lines of faithfulness and trust even more sharply. Just before the passage that we read this morning, 
Peter has declared his understanding, his gut feeling really, that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one of God. And now springboarding off that declaration, Jesus begins to teach his disciples what his Messiahship will mean. That the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. Of course Peter doesn't want to hear it. Suffering, rejection, and death, especially at the hands of the leaders and the keepers of the tradition and promises of God, well, that would be a sign of failure. And that is not what Peter and the others had signed up for. But Jesus stops him in his tracks even calling him Satan for trying to undercut and derail Jesus' meaning. He tells Peter to get in line behind him where he belongs, that he is not looking at things, that he is looking at things from a human perspective and not from God's perspective. The Lord is on the move. The Messiah is in their midst. God's kingdom is arriving even now but it is not yet fully realized. It will not be accomplished without suffering, rejection, shame, and death before resurrection. And the disciples and anyone who wants to walk the way of Jesus better accept this truth and be prepared for it. Even further, Jesus says that his followers should be prepared for some of the same in their own lives. They can't just claim him as their Lord and then reject the terms of discipleship that Jesus has laid out. The glory and the beauty and the joy of the new life of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven is on the threshold, but it is also not yet. The resurrection will inaugurate the kingdom, but even then we are still in the now, but not yet. For all will not be fully accomplished until God's new heaven and new earth come to pass in God's own good time. And in the meantime, in the meantime, we walk by faith. We follow Jesus. We know that there is more yet to come. Now, if all this leaves your head spinning a bit, I don't blame you. It's a lot to take in. And yet that's part of being faithful and walking in the way of Christ, learning to live in the meantime, in the in-between times, and doing so without taking matters into our own hands to try to make God's purposes and promises come to fruition any faster. Christian disciples, the church, the body of Christ, are found in every corner of the world, in all places and countries and cultures, and we live with and under many and diverse forms of government. Some places where the, some are places where the church is established, where the official religion, where it is the official religion of the country, as it is in England. In other places, the government is completely secularized, as it is in France. And in yet other countries, like Saudi Arabia, Christian faith is officially outlawed. For us here in the United States, the situation is an intricate mix. We have historically been a culture with a majority of at least nominal Christian faith. Doesn't mean everybody was a Christian, but nominal Christian faith. And we have a system of laws and governing principles based upon the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and they try to do several things at once. They recognize the inherent worth and value of every person, which is a deeply Christian and biblical idea. And at the same time, 
the founders and the framers put boundaries around the spheres of influence of both religious institutions and government. Individual faith, belief, and conscience would be respected, and the state would be free from the official intrusion of the church. Now, that is not an idea that comes from the Bible, but from the philosophy of 18th century Enlightenment thinkers, many of whom actually rejected Christian faith in whole or in part, at least in the way the New Testament presents it. And some of you may know that Thomas Jefferson had his own version of the Bible where he basically had taken a pair of scissors and cut out anything that he didn't agree with, like all the miracles and resurrection and all kinds of things like that. But what the founders and the framers wanted to protect against was the toxic mix of power and religious faith that has happened so often throughout history when there is no counterweight to either church or state. In fact, that is the role the prophets played in the Old Testament in relation to the kings of Judah and Israel. They offered God's wisdom and warning when the king's desire for power, control, or wealth threatened to lead them into conflict and faithlessness. The founders and the framers were right. We do well to continue in that tension of the freedom to live our faith as best we can while also having separation of church and state. It is a messy mix, to be sure. We do live in a world that is now, but not yet. And Jesus calls us to live and work and pray for the coming of God's kingdom which is always and already breaking through into our midst, but has not yet come in all its fullness, and which we cannot make happen by fiat or sheer force of will. And those who try to do so end up serving not God, but their own need for power and control. And in the meantime, in the meantime, we walk by faith in Christ. We love and respect our fellow human beings, each one of whom is made in the image of God and has been so loved by Christ that he was willing to die for them. We care for those who need our help and our love and need a place to belong. We live with humility, patience, perseverance, and joy. And we trust God for ourselves, and for the world God has made. Let us pray. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would my disciple be. Take up your cross with willing heart and humbly follow after me. Amen. Let us stand and give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 326. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 328. The sung response after each petition is, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and, give, and to give thanks for all. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear my mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Carly, our bishop, Vicki, our rector, Sister Monica Clare, preparing for ordination, and the community of St. John Baptist, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear my mercy, hear our We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Philip, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, hear my mercy, hear Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, hear my mercy, hear And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort all those on our prayer list, especially Ann Bird, Carol C., Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Charlotte Davis, Eleanor, Mary Beth Finn, John Grabko, Henny, Joanne, John, Jane Hayden, Steve Kowalik, Sophie Levan, Marianne and Rob and their family, Robert Paul Mayers, Monty and his family, Deanna R., Bill Tainer, Phyllis Wallace, Janet Weaver, for our youth confirmation class, for the people of Ukraine, for a just and secure peace in the Holy Land, and for those we name. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, hear my mercy. We give thanks and pray for the diocese in our Anglican cycle of prayer, 
the churches in our diocesan cycle of prayer, for all the ministries of our parish, especially All Saints Choir, and for those who serve our local community, especially Boy Scout Troop 56. Lord, in thy mercy, We give thanks and pray for the members of our congregation, especially Stacy and Sean Ragel Carter, Cindy and Daniel Redatar, Alicia and Greg Ross, Sarah and Jennifer, Jackie and Anthony Saida, Abby, Amelia, Adam, Elise, Andrew, Aaron, Earl and Jan Sandberg, Val, Emily, Alex and Glory Santa Santangelo, Mariano and Alexander, and Donald Davidson, for Weston Birdo preparing for baptism, and for those Thanksgivings we name. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear and those whom we name. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these, o, our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. <laughs> Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service this morning. Welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom and uh, will be watching this video later. Uh, please do know that we have coffee hour following the service. Come across the street and join us for that. Um, there are announcements on the back page. Um, as you have already experienced, we are well into Lent. So we're using all of our right one responses that we're not very practiced at, uh, but just hang in there with us. Um, the, as I said, the announcements are on the back page. The annual parish meeting is next week. That's an important time in the life of our parish, so please do plan to join us for that. Uh, the Lenten Lunch and Learn is this Tuesday. We're actually beginning with Chapter 1. We did some preliminary work last week. Uh, so we're happy to have anybody join us who would like to join us for that. Uh, it's preceded at 12 noon by noonday prayer here in the church, and that's open to anybody who wants to come for um, just a bit of, of quiet and uh, reflective time. You don't have to be part of the book group for that. Um, please do sign up for the, uh, for the 10 years on the 10th party. Um, it's, uh, there's a sign-up sheet outside, so please do sign up and tell us what you're going to bring to help us celebrate uh, Allison's 10 years of music ministry here at All Saints. And then the Lenten Quiet Day is on March 16th, Saturday. That's here from 10 a.m. to 1.30. Uh, Sister Monica Clare will be our retreat leader. And again, there's a sign-up sheet outside for that. Um, there are other announcements there you can take a look at, and is there anything that needs to come before us today that hasn't already been said? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer 2, found on page 340. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me. very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels, and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
continuing on page 339, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never-failing care, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>